Okay. Logan's Run. Yes. Yep. Another forgotten classic. This is uh, one that I saw when I was a little kid. This was pre-Star Wars. Yeah, it came out almost exactly a year before Star Wars. Right. I first came in contact with it probably like in third grade, second grade. I would hear other kids talking about Logan's Run. Sandmen and Runners. And then, of course, a few months later... Star Wars came out, and Logan's Run was totally forgotten. Uh, totally forgotten. That's right. And I didn't see it in the theater. Some of the kids, uh, this is probably like, you know, from what I understand. It came out in 1976. Yeah, 76. 76. Yeah. From what I understand, you know, uh, some people would probably, our British listeners would be appalled, but many people took their kids to see this one. Yeah. You know, and... Uh, well, by today's standards, it wasn't that bad. It right. wasn't super violent or... Yeah. There was a couple sex there scenes, sex but scenes not and, really that big a deal. Yeah, and there was people being zapped by laser beams and being killed off at 30. Yeah, true. But this is one that we saw. Now, when... After Star Wars came out, they actually played Logan's Run on television. Yeah. At least I, in California. I did. think that's where I ended up seeing it. I think it kind of went into rotation on one of the pay channels. Yeah. So I probably saw it in the early 80s. I think I saw it like maybe in 77. Yeah. Because Star Wars came out and Logan's Run lost its value. So they just put it on local television. Yeah. I felt like Logan's Run kind of came out. It's kind of of the same sort of genre as, you know, like THX 1138. Yeah. Planet of the Apes. Brave New World. um, Soylent Green. Yeah. Like all those kind of Westworld, all those kind of movies. And really, I feel like the late 60s, early 70s. That was kind of the beginning of sci-fi being taken a little bit more seriously, maybe. I think it was still, you know, by movie makers, like by Hollywood in general, it was still kind of considered a quote-unquote like a ghetto genre, which I think was a holdover from the 50s and 60s with, you know, like the big bug movies and all the really silly sci-fi ideas. Logan's Run, I think, was probably like one of the really... The first really big sci-fi movies. The yeah, they, they had spent a lot. Sets. It was MGM, and they spent yeah. like $9 million on the yeah. thing, which was a lot of money for had, 1976. It had good sets. Uh, it was filmed in kind of like a, a mall. In Texas, in, yeah. In Texas. It wasn't like really a, a mall. It was like a vent. It was a place where vendors went. Yeah, it was like a vendor mall, like yeah. to go see other um, vendors, vendors would look, wares. Exactly. Yeah. So it wasn't like a publicly open no, mall. No, but it, it's big and uh, they had uh, pretty good miniatures. Yeah. Because, I mean, obviously you uh, can tell they're miniatures now, but, right. you know, they, they you look could, super cool. You could tell they were miniatures well, back yeah, then. Well, yeah, you could tell they were miniatures yeah. back then. <laughs> I mean, but they still look, looked cool. <laughs> when, you, when they would show the pictures of Logan City, you know, they had uh, monorails and they had buildings. But there were also lakes and, and like yeah. ponds in it. You could tell that those that, that was yeah. not very much water. That's kind of what you gave could, it away. Yeah, that's what gave it away, the, the water. water. Yeah. Right. So why don't you paint a picture? Tell us about Logan's Run, and then we'll, we can make comments. Yeah, okay. So, you know, maybe for younger listeners who haven't right. seen Logan's Run, but it's based on a novel which came out seven years earlier, uh, which was written by William F. Nolan and George Clayton Johnson. It was also called Logan's Run. Now, the movie was a lot different than the book, and we'll get into that a little bit later on. But the movie essentially uh, posits the existence of a domed city, a very large domed city. Um, yeah, it's like post-apocalyptic. It's there was post-apocalyptic. There was a war. Um, mm-hmm. We fucked up our environment. We blew it up. God, yeah, yeah. The, the, you know, the Hest would be involved. <laughs> right. Yeah. So evidently someone at some point in the past, the movie's set in 2274, at some point in the past they said, okay, well, to preserve the human race, mm-hmm. they're going to put them all inside a domed city. Yeah. They control their reproduction. They base it, it seems like they don't say this outright, but it does seem like the babies are maybe test tube babies or they, right. don't, they don't reproduce in the normal way. Right. They it's just not really clear. A certain number. The main character's name is Logan Five, and he's a Sandman who's kind of like a cop in this, in this situation. He goes to a nursery to see his son. Yeah, quote unquote. Yeah, he calls it his son. But they never mentioned any mother. Yeah. So I kind of led to believe that what it is is that that's Logan 6. And that, yeah. they're, that they're clones. They're clones, I right. think. Yeah, I think so. That's what I think the implication right. is. Because they never show any pregnant girls or women or any kind of child rearing. In fact, they what's the, what's the female character's name? Jessica. Jessica. Uh, Jessica says she wished she had known her mother. 
So that means the, the women don't raise yeah. children. And Logan looks at her like she has three heads when she says that. Like, why are you saying such crazy things? Right, yeah. So I don't think there are mothers. I think they're... I think they're they come clones. Out of, I yeah. think they're clones that come out of an artificial, artificial womb. Artificial womb type of thing. Right. Yeah, like I said, they don't really say that. And, and there's no connection between parents and children because no. when logan is at the beginning at the nursery going hey it's logan six or whatever yeah. like his friend it's like so Francis is like yeah big whoop big yeah. whoop you know what i mean right and, and little children are not being raised by anybody they're just walking around the city yeah yeah so the whole conceit of the movie like i said there's it there's population control in this particular dome they never say how many people live there he says it's thousands so i guess right. it's like a few thousand and everything is basically done for them some of them kind of have jobs because there's plastic surgeons and things like that yeah but you're not really expected to do anything super productive it doesn't seem no, like no no they're not paying bills Right. They're, they're not, not paying bills. bills. They're basically all their needs are provided. Their it's food okay. is provided. Their home is provided. You know, they all live in little apart, like nice apartments and you, things like that. You could say it was a, it was a communist utopia. Sort but, of, But yeah. not Marxist and not really political. They didn't have any political ideas. No. Everything was provided for them. Didn't look like they were paying any bills. Uh, they lived in luxury. They had everything. They lived for pleasure. It was very hedonistic. Yeah. But the cost of all this is that you had to die at 30 right they had to go to this ritualistic destruction or death thing called carousel yeah and it was like a ritual they'd stand in a circle and they'd float up towards a ceiling towards a white crystal and they were zapped by lasers yeah and you'd be destroyed and people thought that this was normal and this is what you had to do now some people would try to run from it they would become what was called runners and the sandman who is that was logan five was born a sandman they had they were like the cops they had to run these or chase these people down and zap them with a with a butane lighter <laughs> no, I, it was a gun and it shot flames that looked just like a butane lighter it and, did, then, yeah. and then an explosion would happen and then yeah, yeah. they would die and then like they a little die. cleanup crew would come and yeah and they would in, in, in a hovercraft and they would spray some chemicals on the body and, and it, it just would dissolve dissolved yeah, yeah. so that, that's ba- the basic premise of the movie is it's kind of like a utopia. But you have to die at 30. So you had the same amount of people being born on the same day that people died. The yeah. same amount of people died. Whenever so. they whenever they had the day of carousel, like everyone would go, you know, like Roman Coliseum, gladiator combat type of thing. Everyone would go and watch it and they would cheer the people because, and we don't know if this was a top down idea or if this was just an idea that evolved that the people who were dying thought they were being renewed or thought they were making an effort to be renewed, which I assume would be reincarnation or going to a higher plane or something like that. Obviously, they were just killed that we know of. They were were trying to get something called renewal, uh, which I guess is reincarnation. But it's implied in, in the script that not everyone is renewed. They're trying to renew. Yeah. And it's unclear whether or not they're told this by their society, because the society is basically run by a supercomputer, yeah. you find out. You don't know if the supercomputer has told them this, or if this is a mythology they have invented to explain Carousel. Yeah. I think it was a that they invented That this. it might have been a bottom-up mythology. Yeah. That, like It's almost like a religious. Like a religious thing. So we're not really dying, we're just going to another mm-hmm. place, or we're being reincarnated. Yeah, and there's something about... Maybe I'll reincarnate or we should fight to renew. You know, I'm going to try all I can to renew. And I think it was a bottom-up concept. I think they're watching Carousel happen because it has to by the laws of their society. And then they're trying to rationalize it. Maybe I can reincarnate. Now, some people have said that there's this this white crystal towards the ceiling that they're floating up towards. It's pretty cool when you see it in the movie. Some people have hypothesized that they're trying to touch that white crystal. Like grabbing the brass ring right. on a merry-go-round. And if they touch that white crystal, maybe they renew. Now, they, the people in the movie say, have you ever seen anyone renew? And they're like, no. Everyone just blows up they before they blow get there. They just blow up. <laughs> now, there's some deleted scenes that explain a lot of plot holes that people have brought up in other reviews or retrospectives. And one of the one of the things is something called that they mention something in the deleted in the deleted scenes called flaming out. Now, as they're going up towards the top of that crystal, they get zapped by lasers and they blow up. Yeah. In the deleted scenes, they're talking about that that must be the that that is the ultimate rush. Yeah. Being blown up. Yeah. So even if you don't renew, at least you're blowing up, and it's the ultimate rush. Yeah. 
But they kind of took that out. Yeah, that did. I don't think they mentioned it anywhere else, but it is mentioned in the deleted scenes. Yeah. Which, uh, of which it seems like only the audio mostly remains. Yeah. Because I think a lot of the... Um, MGM burned a lot of its burned stuff. Burned a lot of their stuff when they were um, going bankrupt or and whatever. And there was probably a lot of stuff that, that was deleted out of the movie that explains certain things that appear to be plot holes. Yeah. Because I do uh, feel like people, and I do think there are probably still a couple of plot holes now when, I mean, I've seen the movie many times and I've read a bunch of different things about different interpretations. I haven't read the book, but I've read various breakdowns of the plot. And also there was a short-lived TV series that came out. That explained I think it was stuff. 1977, 1970, that added some more things to the mythology that might have explained some things in the movie too, even though I heard that the... TV series wasn't very good, but it I did kind of the, add some I things. remember it vaguely as a child and I wasn't impressed. Yeah, I think there was only 14 episodes. I, I saw Logan's Run after I saw Star Wars, and I thought Logan's Run sucked after yeah. seeing Star Wars. It wasn't well, until after I, Star Wars, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was like, man, what are they talking about? That sucks. Look yeah. at those, look at, you know, look at those clothes, you know. <laughs> but as I got older and, and watched Logan's Run again, you know, maybe in, when I was in my teens... It made a lot more sense. I liked it better. Yeah. As I got older. Now I can watch it and go, oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Well, the look of it is very cool. I mean, it's yeah. very 70s. Very obviously. 70s. Yeah. It's the, it's the future imagined by the 70s. Which is a kind of a pitfall that a lot of sci-fi yeah. falls into, which I think is why Star Wars still resonates because it didn't fall into that. Yeah. But I think a lot of uh, sci-fi, particularly from the 60s and 70s, it still looks very yeah. 60s and 70s. It doesn't look like the future. They did the right thing with Star Wars. What they did is that Star Wars was kind of looked very 1930s, which yeah. in a way could kind of look futuristic in a certain ways. Oh, yeah, look, see, I think yeah. that's what you should do. If you're going to do something future, or you could do like the fifth element where they took everything from like the 18th century and then yeah. like updated, you know, that kind of thing. I think that that'll always work out better. But so anyway, so in the movie Logan's Run, as Tom mentioned before, there are people called runners and they try to escape to a place called sanctuary. Right. Now, if they want to live out their complete and total lives. Because these are the seditious rebel people. Yeah. And, and where the story really gets interesting is Logan 5, after, after taking out a runner, goes back to his pad and they have this mechanism that's kind of like a cross between a dating... An it's online, like Tinder. It's like Tinder mixed with... A Star Trek teleporter. Yeah. <laughs> you, can, you can press a button and people can, can materialize in your room, you know, so you can have sex with them. Yeah. Kind of a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> so you ju- So evidently people would offer themselves up to go into this thing and you could be selected by somebody else. As a side note, everybody in this movie is hot. <laughs> so, you know. Well, they're not, all young. Yeah. They're all young and they're all physically fit. And they they all look pretty good, so you can't really get a bad choice. Yeah. Now, one of the things that happens uh, when Logan Fives goes to this little Tinder teleporter, <laughs> the three D app. One of the Ooh. first things that appears is a gay guy. Yeah. But he doesn't make a judgment on it. He just goes, no, not what I'm looking for. And then another one. Which was very progressive for the time. It's like they didn't make a joke out of it. They didn't. No. He was just like, no, nah, I kind of want a yeah, woman. You know what I mean? Yeah, a woman, yeah. And it, didn't he ask Jessica, too, when she didn't want to have sex have sex with him, didn't he say, oh, well, do you prefer women or are you a lesbian or something? No, didn't he I ask her? No, I said, well, I think he said, well, why did you put yourself in the circuit? Yeah. I think that's what what he said. And she put herself in the circuit because... She wanted to talk about life and stuff like that. Well, because a friend of hers had died at Carousel. That's that right. She wanted to talk about the meaning of, of life. And, and everybody's like, thing. what? Why right. do you want to do that? No. She's wearing an onk when yeah. she comes out, when he meets Jessica. Jessica's a British actor actress. Jenny Agutter. Jenny Agutter. Yeah. She's a hottie. And uh, who's playing Logan Five? What's his name again? Michael uh, York. Michael York. Yeah, another real handsome guy. So... They start talking about the meaning of life, and she asks him about Sanctuary, if she knew about Sanctuary, and she's saying a lot of stuff to this Sandman that really could get herself into a lot of trouble. Yeah, very seditious. Yeah, it kind of, it's, a, it's against the, the mores of the, this society. Well, before it gets too deep, his buddy Sandman shows up with two other hotties, and they have some uh, some smoke drugs. <laughs> and, uh, and everybody's like, wee! Yeah. And then Jessica's Jessica like, bounces. I'm out. Yeah, Jessica bounces. And what the drug that they had was, that he took a ball and he threw it up towards the ceiling, and it exploded into a big pink cloud. It was like, it's like one of those big yeah. bath ball things yeah. that you put in your bathtub that makes your... Yeah, he threw it up towards the ceiling, pretty. it exploded, and a big pink cloud came down, and the girls were jumping up going, wee, trying to grab it <laughs> as it was coming down, and that was 
eyes, <laughs> and then they just all start falling on each other, and then the scene cuts away. Well, that runner that he had killed earlier that day was also wearing a knock. Yeah, he had it like in his pocket or something. And, and he ends up going back to work where the big central computer is. And really, this is whenever they're dealing with the central computer, I think it's really the best scenes in the movie. The, the set looks really good. It looks like something out of the Death Star. It's black with a lot of chrome and there's lights. And it looks like kind of a little bit like uh, whoever made that that set may have had something to do with making the, the sets for Star Wars in the Death Star. It could have been. Because I think those were all British. There's a lot of British people involved Working in on it, yeah, making on the this movie. So it looks like the Death Star kind of. Uh, well, uh, he drops a bunch of items in a scanner from the day before to show it to the main computer and it identifies the Ankh, and, and, and he gets into this conversation with the main computer. And the main computer is actually kind of creepy, because when, when you watch it, there's little pauses, and it sound, it's a woman's voice, and it sounds kind of mechanical. kind of gives you this sensation that the computer is trying to figure out what sanctuary is, and, maybe, and, and, it's, and it's thinking. Well, what it does, I, I don't know if we mentioned it, they're born with these things in the palms of their or hands. Or they're implanted after they're born, one or the we, other. Well, they get bigger because the little baby had one and it was little. Yeah, true. So it grows So maybe them. it's like an organic, like a biomechanical. You're right. It's like a little crystal, a flexible crystal in the palms of their hands that changes color as they age. Yeah. And when they when when it get when they get towards last day, which is, you know... When they turn 30. When they turn 30, it's, it turns red and it starts to blink. Yeah. And, and if they pass last last day, it's just black. Yeah. The computer asked him if he recognized the symbol of the Ankh. And he's like, no. And, he, and, and then the computer says, Ankh, it, the Ankh is talking about sanctuary. What it does is, I don't want to spoil the whole scene, plus I don't really remember exactly everything that it told him. It caused his life clock to go blinking red. It took four years of, of his life away and turned him into a runner to try to find sanctuary where 1, 000, over 1,000 people were were, uh, were missing. Unaccounted for. Unaccounted in for. In the society. In the society. To find this place and destroy them. Now he asks, he says, I'm going to get my four years back? And the computer doesn't answer. So he ends up going on a run. And the first person he goes to was the was Jessica, who the, the girl... Because she was also wearing an onk. So she was wearing an onk. She, must, know she must know where sanctuary is. And it's kind of interesting, this part of the movie, because... We assume that Logan had been an asking questions and he was a little too thoughtful for a Sandman, if you ask me. Yeah. Even though he did enjoy his job, it did seem yeah. to look like he did enjoy killing people. I'm assuming or inferring that the computer listens to you kind of like your smart TV listens to you. Yeah. <laughs> and, that, and that the computer figured this guy asked too many questions and he knows too much. And he came in contact with a, with a girl who, had, who asked him questions about sanctuary so let's go ahead and make logan a runner i don't think that that computer had any intention intention of, of giving him his four years back no i don't think so it either was, it was just going to kill him yeah so he goes on from run you can go you can take it from there jen he's sent out on a run almost it, it's almost like the the computer setting him on an undercover mission right? yeah. but like you said i don't think the computer had any intention of letting him come back or no. you know giving there him was, his four years back no. or anything like that now, the thing we thought was weird about this is that, now, did the computer specifically tell him not to tell the other Sandman? No, Sandman and this, that is a, going? this is a plot hole, but it may be explained later on because of the book. Maybe they were... Yeah, maybe they the were referring back to the book. We're not sure. Here's the weird thing. Logan's, Logan's life clock goes red. He runs, all right? But he doesn't tell his best friend... Francis. Francis, who's another Sandman... He doesn't tell him that he's on a secret mission to find sanctuary. So Francis goes after him. Francis goes after him. And here's another thing. Francis knew how old he was. You would think, yeah. And, and he would have known that he had four years left. So he, sh why is he running early? Yeah. Now, there's another, there, there's another scene that shows up later. He and Jessica basically go to the ghetto. And the ghetto is where a bunch of little kids yeah, live. Yeah, it's called Cathedral. It's called Cathedral. And they inhale this drug that was... That was in the deleted scene. Yeah, it was deleted out of the movie. It was called muscle. Yeah. And it accelerated your your nervous system. Yeah. So you could move at blinding speed. It also made you strong. While they were down there dealing with these kids, he runs across another runner who says, no, I'm green. I'm not a runner. In other words, her life clock had also been accelerated. She claims. But she looks older anyway. 
Yeah, he, that, he kills her. Yeah, that's kind of another thing that's because a lot of the actors that are in this movie, even though they're all supposed to be under 30, some of them are clearly well over 30. Yeah, which may be explained by the book. Because in the book, the city computer that's running the society seems to be malfunctioning. Right. And it could be that that woman actually was supposed to be a green. I'm saying a green because that was the color of the crystal. Yeah, right and there. the clothes they wore too because right. you had to wear a particular color of clothes depending on what age uh, bracket you were in. And in the book, Francis, the other sad man, actually was 42. Yeah. And they were supposed to be dead at 20 in the book. 21. 21 at the book. And he was actually 42 because he had cheated. He had his face yeah. changed. Well, and, and he, he had, was a secret agent. He was, he, was a secret he was working with the underground the whole time. Right. And in the in book, the movie he wasn't. And in the book, he's pretending to chase Logan. Yeah. All right, to find out where Sanctuary is, but he knows that Sanctu- that he knows that Logan's run is actually an artificial run. Right. So that may explain why in the movie Francis is yeah chasing Logan, you know, as if Logan is a real runner. And Lo- it may explain wh- why Francis looks as old as he does. Yeah, because like yeah. I, it might just be like the actors they cast for the role. It's yeah. kind of hard to say right. because I mean, obviously, even when Jessica is talking to some of the like underground people mm-hmm. that know about Sanctuary, you know, some of those people are clearly older than thirty. Yeah, and I don't know if that's just a case of actors or if it's if they're just kind of calling back to. I kind of think that maybe what was happening is is that guys making the movie weren't really sure which way they were going to play the script. Yeah, there may have been a couple of different scripts going on at the same time. Yeah, and then later it was decided in editing that the whole subplot of uh, of Francis being a secret agent and knowing I think maybe all that stuff got deleted or abandoned during the filming. That's what I think. Yeah, honestly, like I said, I should say in the book the age of death was twenty one. Now, but also in the book there was a lot of differences. In the book it was like a worldwide thing. At twenty one yeah. there was no carousel in the book. No, they just you killed just, themselves. You just submitted yourself to a place called a sleep shop, and they euthanized you yeah. when you turned twenty one. Now, and this happened all over the world. Like everyone willingly did this, right. which. And a couple things, I, um, a couple analysis, analyses I was reading of it said, you know, that made the book a little more unbelievable than the movie, actually, right. because in the movie, everything happened under a single domed city. So everything was much more controlled. They said, you know, the reason and the fact that you could live till you were 30 made it a little bit more believable, too. Yeah. Although the director, Michael Anderson, said, well, the only reason we raised the age to 30 is because we didn't want to have to hire a bunch of teenage actors because yeah. it would have been too much of a pain in the ass. Yeah, and imagine this. You're hiring teenage actors, right? And some of them are really young. And then they have to do the sex scenes. Right, because there's kind of a take, lot of then, sensuality in this. Yeah, and, and then they have to take all the drugs. Yeah. So, so it would have been like a little yeah. bit of a minefield and they didn't really they want to deal with that. They want to do it politically. And under, and under a particular age also. Um, There's union laws and stuff. Yeah, like actors that. can't, they can't work more than four hours a day right. and they have to have on-set schooling and things like that. So it was just too cost prohibitive, prohibitive on an already expensive movie. Here's another strange thing too. Okay, so Logan is ostensibly sent on a secret mission to find Sanctuary. Right. His hand is made to start blinking and he goes on a run with none. Jessica hooks him up with all the underground people. Yeah. And he goes. And he has to start off by getting his face changed at a, uh, a plastic, plastic surgeon. surgeon. Farrah Fawcett's there. Yeah. Yeah, she's the receptionist. Yeah, she is. She's, she's and, in this in a small role. Yeah, and she's Farrah Fawcett pre-Charlie's Angels. Yeah. All right. And I remember, you know, Beck, she was considered to be like the it girl of the 70s. Oh, yeah. You look at her today and she's okay looking, but I think Jessica's better looking. Than I did too, actually. Than... Which, but... She was a good looking woman, but there's really nothing special about her. Well, apostle. see, now that's another thing that always kind of bothered me about like, oh, babes of certain ages and stuff yeah. like that. I always wondered, like, why were those ones considered pretty and other ones weren't? Because... To yeah. me, I don't know. It's, I'm not saying Farrah Fawcett was was a beautiful woman, but she was a very blandly pretty woman. Yeah, it was Jenny a... Agutter looked a lot more interesting. She had yeah. like a much more like a more classically beautiful face. Yeah. I thought it was just the style of the '70s. I guess shows, so. shows, Plus, I couldn't uh... stand that feathered hair even back yeah. in those days. Oh my god. <laughs> So there's some cool scenes that happen in that, and uh, he never does does get his face changed. Well, because Francis figures out that he's going to run, and then s- follows him to the thing. That's right, and they have to run out of the out of the thing, and then, and then the they, laser ends up killing the right, doctor. Right, and there was a back door that goes into the love shop, 
and when they run through there, they get attacked by a slow moving orgy. As we it's saw another review of it last night, slow motion orgy. Slow motion said, orgy. They get attacked by a slow, slow motion, motion orgy. <laughs> yeah. said, we're stealing that's, that. That's what it looks like in there. It's just a, <laughs> like a slow motion or orgy. Everyone's just naked dancing or whatever. Yeah. And apparently like, that scene was much longer in the original. Yeah, cut they, they cut, cut a lot of that out. And in the back of the love shop. There's a uh, there was a secret door that that led to kind of a more clandestine area with a bunch of people with these weird steam steam spears I guess you could say it was like a spear with a crystal on the end of it that, that looked shot, like a penis pump on the yeah, end yeah that of. shot some kind of hot steam out of it but Logan's got a, got his uh, butane lighter gun and he holds them off at bay. Well, and here's here's something that interested me about this. Okay, so at this point, Logan is still working for the domed city, right? Because yeah. as soon as they get into the clandestine area with all of Jessica's friends, he surreptitiously alerts all the other Sandmen. Yeah, he he had like a little radio type device with yeah. a button on it. And he's he like, press "Hey, it, here they it, are." And it would yeah, he thought he he thought he had found sanctuary. I think. I'm thinking that's maybe what the implication was. Right. That he thought, oh, here's sanctuary with all these seditious people in one place. Right. So he pressed the button, and all the salmon show up, and they kill all those people. Yeah, they, they killed all Jessica's friends. So yeah, nice. kill all Jessica's friends, and he and Jessica run to the back, and Jessica says, "Take the ark. The ark's a key." Yeah, to get out. Yeah, right. And she drops hers. Of course, because she's water. a girl, and girls can't in, do anything. Into some water, but Logan still has his, and he opens the door, and they go through. Now, Francis, the other, the, uh, Logan's the other buddy, runner, yeah. the other Sandman. Sandman, he sees all this happening and he grabs the onk out of the water and uses it as a key to also open the door. And where it leads to is a big, like a subterranean, looks like a factory. Yeah. And it's like the bowels of, of the dome. Of the city, Somehow. Because yeah. it's kind of weird. They go up. They don't go down. They go up. Yeah, because they fall and into, well, don't they fall in, there's like all this water and then they go into an elevator and then they go up. Yeah, I'm not really sure how it works. It's kind of confusing where this is happening because this is not an underground society. It's just in a, in a dome. Yeah. They go up and it gets cold. I don't really understand well, what's Well, we happened. should say, too, that the bowels of the city, it kind of looks like a fish hatchery. Yeah, it's a big fish, fish hatchery. I mean, there's big tanks and there are still fish in there, Yeah, it looks like. Yeah. But then some of the tanks look like they're empty and right. it looks unused. Right. So and, I don't know who's feeding those fish. And Logan just says, you know, this is where the city's food supply used to be produced. Yeah, they used to breed animals to for eat. food and Jessica's yeah. like, like, oh, that's gross, right? <laughs> So they run, they go up, and it gets cold, it's frozen. And this is the weirdest part of the movie. This is the weird part of the movie. (laughs) And they go into this frozen ice cave, and there's big ice sculptures of of a walrus and a bunch of penguins and birds, and this big kind of a humanoid robot rolls out. It's got arms and it's got arms and it has a head, but it but it doesn't have legs. Its body just stands up and it's I guess it's got rollers. Yeah. And it's made out of mirror. And this cool He's little super shiny. This cool little guy comes down named Box. Yeah. You got his voice. Yeah. He, I I'm gonna put that yeah, as just the play beat. it. This is what you need. You need. Okay. Welcome, humans. I am ready for you. Fish, plankton, sea greens, and protein from the sea. Fresh as harvest day. Overwhelming, am I not? Fish and plankton from the sea. I love that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love that guy's voice. He did a lot of voiceover work later. He's been in a shit ton of movies, too. Yeah. His name's Roscoe Lee Brown. He's dead now, unfortunately. But if you look at his uh, Wikipedia page, he was in a shit ton of movies, and he did a shit ton of voice work. And he did. Yeah. He even wrote plays and things like that, too. He's a, he was a cool dude. Yeah, he's a real standout character in the movie. Now, some people are calling him a robot. But he clearly says that he is a fusion of man and machine. So like a cyborg. more than the two. You know, blah, blah, blah. So he's a cyborg. Yeah. And he's been down there by himself uh, alone. And he is definitely insane. Uh, now, in a deleted scene, he makes a deal with them that he will show them where the runners went if they, al- if they allow themselves to pose for a sculpture. And he's real talented and he sculpts them quickly. Out of ice. Out of ice. Naked, of course. Okay. And then he takes them to the back. Or, or I guess it's a back. It doesn't really show. Yeah, it's just like a huge big ice cave. This is actually yeah. cool. This Actually, this part, when I saw this yeah. as a kid, it kind of scared me. Yeah. So he takes him to another area of the cave, and there's a bunch of frozen people, people there. And he says, you know, the food stopped coming. From but the, the sea. From but, the sea. So they came. But then these people started coming. It's so I my thought, job. I thought yeah. I'd freeze them too. Yeah, so you know, he tried, <laughs> So he bears down on them, but Logan blows him up with his butane lighter. <laughs> Got it. Like you do. Right. So part with Vox's... Box, yeah. Box, yeah. So he, he's uh, finished. 
and they keep going and they end up leaving the ice yeah, cave. Yeah, they get out and they, they get, get out, out of the dome they and they get the outside. And they see the sun for the first time. They They've never know, seen it They've before. never seen a sun. So it, I'm pretty sure they lifted that from THX 1138. Yeah. When Thex finally gets out of the... Out Which of the, we might do a review yeah, on Yeah, we'll do That's a good one too. Actually, write that down. Okay. Right that down. Okay, so they get outside and they've never been outside before and they're kind of wandering around and it's funny because this part's actually pretty funny to me because Jessica is like immediately starts whining about how much outside sucks. Yeah, it's cold. Where's the food? Yeah. <laughs> Because, you know, she didn't know, and she's, like, lived her whole entire life. And they walk around, and obviously this is the ruins of Washington, D.C. Because you yeah. see the Capitol building, you see the Lincoln Memorial. Now, they don't know what this is or yeah. why it's there. Or who Lincoln is. Or who Lincoln is or anything like that. they show Lincoln twice. Yeah. They show the statue, and then later on in the Library of Congress, they find, they find a, a portrait, a portrait of, him. of him. Yeah. And there's an old guy living in there with a bunch of cats. Yeah, in the Tell Senate in the Senate chamber. In, in the Senate chamber. Yeah, they eventually find the Senate chamber, and they find an old man who's played by Peter Ustinov. He's never yeah. named. He's just called Old Man. Yeah. And he lives in there with a bunch of cats, and he's actually a really good character. Like, yeah. he's obviously a little addled, but like in a cool, yeah. like, nice grandpa way, not like in a crazy lunatic kind of way. So he lives with all these cats, and they've also, ne- they've never seen an old person before, so they're like, what's the matter with you? Why is your yeah. hair gray? What are, why are, what are all these cuts in your face? She's said do they hurt yeah and stuff like that and he's like what the fuck okay whatever yeah. and they'd never seen cats before either and the, the cats have three names every that's cat a, have three names that's like a t.s Eliot. Yeah, yeah, yeah he was yeah. quoting from t.s Eliot's yeah. uh, book of practical cats <laughs> but yeah so this old guy's there and and he says that now his parents were runners right yeah you well you're led to believe that yeah, I think it's implied he, that his parents were runners. So, I, I, so Box didn't get all the runners. Some no. of them actually did get out. No, the city computer said there were about 1,100. 1,000, 1,056, I 1, think 1,056. Said, or 1,156, something like that. Runners unaccounted for. But what Box shows, the frozen people that Box shows, that's probably only about 60 people, I would think. Yeah. So he didn't get them all. Yeah. So they did get out. I figured if Logan and Jessica got out, then some of the other people must have got out too, I would think. And how fast could Box roll? Right. Yeah. That's what I mean. It's like, I'm, you know, obviously he didn't get killed before now, so no one else shot him or anything like that. But but it's like some some people could just sneak through or maybe he didn't hear them or something like that. But yeah, so the old man, it's implied that the old man's parents were maybe runners. And And they did get married and they did raise him. And yeah, they died and he buried them. Yeah, which Logan and Jessica right. think is very weird because that's not like... Right. But they're kind of really fascinated by that right. too. Like maybe that's the way it's supposed to be, you know? Now, Francis caught up with them yeah. and attacked during In this the Senate ma- chamber, right. yeah. And then there was a big fight. There was big a big fight brawl. Scene. And, and Logan killed him. And Logan ends up killing him with a flagpole, right? Then he beat yeah, him to death with a flagpole, flagpole or something like that. Yeah. And he dies. Actually, the moment he dies, he sees Logan's hand and he sees that Logan's crystal is clear now. Yeah. Like okay. it doesn't work anymore. Right. And he's like, what? And then he dies. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I think that was kind of a significant moment. Jessica and Logan at first promised the old man because he's like, well, all I want is, you know, someone to bury me when I die. Like mm. I die, like I buried my parents. And then Jessica says that they will. But then Logan says, no, we have to go back because right. we have to tell all the people in the domed city that that you can live beyond that 30. you can live beyond thirty, and that yeah. you know, and and it's implied too that the world outside is now ready to be repopulated yeah, there because they, you know all the plants have grown back and it looks totally fine. Yeah. So it's I guess habitable. Yeah, so I guess it's gotten past the point of whatever nuclear annihilation right. messed up the whole environment. If it ever did. Could be that they were just that the society just re re engineered to just held, held uh, hold people captive, possibly. Yeah, it could be. I could mean, be. I I thought because I think at the beginning, like the opening crawl, I think it said that there was a war that wiped everything out. But you know yeah. what I mean. I it know. recovered, whatever it does. Yeah. So obviously, it looks like it's recovered. Then, so Logan says, "No, we have to go back." And then the old man says, well, no, you said you were going to stay and bury me and all this other stuff. So then he said, well, why don't you come back with us so yeah. we can show all the people in the city? And you he's know. like, oh, yeah, okay. And he's like, uh, okay, whatever. The people, I'll see all the young people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, I love his character at this. He's just yeah. like so accommodating. Yeah. He's like, okay. So, yeah. so they actually, they bury Francis and have a funeral for him. And then they go back to the city. Now, Logan and Jessica have to go back in this really like convoluted way. They have to go underwater and all this other stuff. So they leave the old guy kind of outside and they said, okay, now we're going to bring everybody to you because obviously you can't swim through this big thing and all this other shit. 
But, so he goes in. Now he gets caught. This is kind of yeah, a funny. Yeah, yeah this is pretty good. He runs in and they're have they're all going to carousel. Yeah, so everybody in town is like in the middle of the mall. So he's running through the mall and he's yelling down at him through like the, off of one of the little balcony things. He's he goes, you don't have to die. <laughs> he does kind of say it like that. <laughs> you don't have to die. <laughs> and uh, they arrest his ass because he's well, he it's funny around. because everybody like in the crowd just kind of like, looks up and goes, meh. <laughs> yeah, they don't know what he's talking about. So he gets arrested. Yeah, and then they have another good scene where they take him back to the to the city's main computer. So he's back in the Death Star. And they got him <laughs> strapped to this chair. And uh, this is like one of the highlights of the movies because for the first time they're like showing laser. Or not laser, what are they called? Uh, holograms. Holograms. This was the first use of ho- of real holograms on film, you guys. Just yeah. Just fun fact. So they got him strapped to this chair and the computer's reading his mind. And it, <laughs> they're asking, the computer's asking him where Sanctuary is, you know. And the holograms of his head are spinning. And they're in yeah. kind of like these little boxes on either side of his head. And it goes... There is no sanctuary. You know, all this kind of shit. <laughs> Old man, <laughs> ruins, and all this kind of shit. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I like that. I, that creeped me out, too, as a kid. That yeah. and box creeped me out when I was little. And, I and this. F- somehow he gets into this big mind-wrestling match with the, the main computer, and the main computer blows up. It's it's like a contradiction because yeah. he can the computer can read Logan's mind. So he knows that Logan is telling the truth. But it's but not the, the computer's truth. programming says there is a sanctuary and that's where the runners are going. Right. So those two things contradict each other. And just like in Star Trek, when you know Kirk tries yeah. to do the little logical Im- impossibility, yeah. right. then the computer's like uh, uh, Yeah. Uh. Yeah, kinda like uh, well, nomad. Yeah. Like nomad. Exactly, yeah. exactly like that. There was a lot Sterilize. of Sterilize. You know. <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of that going on so, yeah. in these movies. But so basically, so the computer blows up. All the people are released. All the people are released from the dome and they all go outside and see the old man and they're all yeah. just like, whoa. Yeah. And they're just like blown away yeah. by how cool this is. And that's pretty much the end of the movie. Yeah. So the implication being that since the environment is now back to normal and since all these people, so they've been, re- it's almost kind of like a reverse well, it's not like reverse, but it's almost kind of like they were in Eden and then they were kind of cast Kicked out. out of the Eden. Because it's yeah. going to be hard for them because they don't know anything. Right, They're yeah. like a bunch of dummies. Now, this here's where it differs from the book. And in a way, like some of the books from, some of the ideas from the book I like better and some of the ideas from the movie I like better. In the book, like I said, it was almost like a worldwide thing. It wasn't just a domed city. But in the book, the people were not dummies. Like, they yeah. knew what the sun was. They knew about history. They said, in, yeah. as a matter of fact, in the book, they had androids, like, reenacting Civil War battles and things like that. So people knew who Abe Lincoln was, and they knew what had happened. They knew about the war and stuff like that. In the movie, it's implied that, I guess, the central computer finds it more pertinent not to give them any information. Yeah, they didn't just, know anything. They just were, to, they, to keep them dumb and happy, you know yeah, what I mean? They were, they just they were like, ch- yeah, drugs, casual sex, whatever. Just yeah. shut up and leave us alone. They were very naive. Yeah, they didn't know it. And like no. I said, as soon as Logan and Jessica left the Dome City, they saw the sun and they were like, what the fuck is that? Like, they yeah. didn't know what it was. They didn't know what outside was. Nothing. And remember, you know, when uh, Logan 5 first meets Jessica, Jessica's asking all these important questions about life. And he's like, why are you asking these things? Why do you think about this? You know, so... Yeah, so like, it, it's almost it, like it didn't occur to them. Yeah, their, their culture was very superficial. Yeah, it was like nice. outside... Yeah, it, like everything was like very youth obsessed. Like I said, plastic surgery was very easy. You could, yeah. People would go get it done all the time. It was just like with lasers, they'd take your face off and give you a new one. And yeah. It, yeah. wasn't a big deal. Yeah, I don't even think they paid for it. No, I don't think they paid for anything. I don't think there was any money. I don't think they paid for anything. Yeah. Really, kind of the whole point of the movie, and it and it kind of came out, like the book came out in 1967, and then the movie came out in 1976, but I think the whole idea for the book kind of came out of the whole youth-obsessed, you know, the, the counterculture of the 60s, yeah. and don't trust anyone over 30, and stuff like that. And, but it was kind of showing, you know, free love and drugs and stuff, but it was kind of showing the dark side of that. Yeah, they were saying, like, that's not utopia. Right. The, that you may think it yeah. is, but it has so a dark side just like yeah, everything Yeah, utopia else isn't true. That's yeah. what they're saying. And I think there was also kind of like, and I don't know if I've seen anybody talk about this really, but there was almost kind of like a religious metaphor because, now in the book, Sanctuary was a real place. Yeah. There was a place called Sanctuary. In the movie, there wasn't. It was just kind of, it was a myth just like renewal at right. carousel and stuff like that. So it's almost kind of like they were telling these people, you know, fictions that would make them feel better. Yeah. 
and you know to keep them from questioning anything yeah but you know the fact that even though they seem to be like genetically engineering these people obviously well you know as we know now that's not an exact science anyway because you're never going to get anybody that's like perfectly docile and perfectly happy to be yeah. dumb you're always going to get like a small percentage that are like fuck this i don't like yeah. it you know was yeah. so so they didn't crack down as much and the presence of the cubs in the cathedral shows that they we're not t- entirely in control of the population because right. there were still some of these kids that took off the feral and, kids. Yeah. Like feral kids that wanted to live in the ghettos and didn't want any yeah. part of it. And there were still like at least a thousand people that had taken off because they didn't want any part of this shit. Yeah. It's, it's definitely kind of, it's definitely a kind of thing where they're trying to recreate Eden. Yeah. All right. It's a kind of a futuristic Eden where you, you don't have to till the soil. You don't have to work. You just have fun, have pleasure and you die early yeah but it's a lie yeah that's that's what that's what that's the meaning of the of the movie if you ask me yeah Yeah. i think it is yeah it's a lie that it's superficial that you know you actually have to till the soil you have to live a long life it's not necessarily good yeah you die and there's no renewal yeah but it's true yeah. You know. So, you know, you just kind of have to take comfort from that. It's like, yeah, you know, yeah. it's it's not saying, I don't think it's saying, oh, you know, life outside is bad. Because it obviously showed, I mean, the old man was, he was a little bit addled, but he was, yeah. he seemed happy with all his yeah. cats and stuff like that. Yeah. You First know. smell like cat piss, but it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> he seemed to be having an all right time. And yeah. he really didn't seem to be having any trouble eating or was, anything like was, that. So I guess he had a garden. I would say it was definitely anti-utopia. Yeah. Definitely well, most of those types yeah. of movies are. Because I think that's the thing. I think... A lot of the movies that came out around that time that people were like, you know, you know, that we can make a perfect utopia or stuff like that. And I think everybody kind of knows deep down that that's not ever going to happen. And if if, if I go just from memory, there weren't any black people in the city. Other than the actor who played Box, but you couldn't see him. So which that matches up with 1800s and early 1900s concepts of utopia that everyone was the same. Everyone's the same. Yeah. Yeah. And everyone is the same. Yeah. That there's no diversity. There's only unity. So it's one people, one race, one religion, one language, because there's no conflict. Yeah. There's no difference. Yeah, because in any case where you're going to get a couple people that are like, hey, I don't like the way this is going or something yeah. like that, then you're going to have or, problems. Or, hey, I'm but... different from you. There was no difference. They were all the same. They were all the same, yeah. They were all the same, and they were all young. Yeah. Which, that's the same. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, after Star Wars came out in 1977, you know, obviously people kind of forgot about Logan's Run for a while. Like yeah. I said, I saw it on TV. I either saw it on TV, um, like on a cable channel, or I saw it on a pay channel like Cinemax or something like that. Because I think they replayed a lot of those kind of 70s because I saw Soylent Green and shit like that. Yeah. But, you know, if you like that idea behind Soylent Green or Brave New World, this takes a lot of ideas from Brave New World. Yeah. Like, of the different colors. And THX. And, the different, and THX 1138, which we actually might do a review yeah, on. Yeah, THX is, is similar. Yeah, it's very similar. Darker, though. Yeah. Logan, here's another thing, though. Logan's Run is not a lighthearted adventure. No, not really. It's uh, kind of a downer in a certain way, although it is pretty. Yeah. It's kind it's of pretty. It's pretty to look at. at. It's very shiny. THX is the same story in a certain way, except it's really oppressive. Yeah. Slow moving and very heavy. THX is. Yeah. I mean, those people had nothing. Yeah. Basically. And that was just about man, mankind living down in a subterranean hole, forced to take drugs yeah. and to be and, and to worship a god of commerce. Yeah. Basically, that's what THX which, was like, like I said, it was similar idea to this, but this was done like and in it a much was anti sex. Oh yeah, yeah see was that, that was yeah that yeah. was that was so that was more like nineteen eighty four. More like nineteen eighty four. So yeah. um, this one was it encouraged. I don't think it made people take drugs or made people have casual sex but they just like encouraged that that was like well there's nothing else to do there was nothing else to do right. so that's just kind of what everyone did and no one discouraged it that was just the way it was yeah when i first when i really first started to think about this i thought that maybe the city in logan's run itself was more like a lifeboat all right but i kind of feel like that's probably what it is that you know there was an apocalypse happened the survivors go into this very protective dome where they can just get lost in hedonistic pleasure, but they die at 30. Yeah. All right. But it doesn't matter because more of them are made. Yeah. And they're not really doing anything anyway. But It's easier for the city computer to take care of them if they're young and healthy. Yeah. Because when they get old, now you have to start worried about convalescence and medical problems and shit right. like that. So they're killing them in their prime. And then I thought the idea was is that when the environment gets better... The dome is 
unlocked. So everyone can... So everyone can go out and repopulate the Earth. Yeah, that's, that, that's kind of what I thought. That's too. what I thought was happening kind of with the the final interrogation, you know what I mean, of Logan, where the computer's finding out that, you know, uh, ruins, you know, the old man, and there is no sanctuary. I thought that maybe the computer had realized that that the environment had recovered. so Because destroyed. there was someone living out there. Yeah, right? so it destroyed, so it destroyed the computer and unlocked the yeah, city maybe, and Yeah, maybe it wasn't even so much. I mean, it was implied in the movie that it was the contradiction that made the computer blow up. But right. like you said, maybe it was the fact of him reading his thoughts and seeing that, what the outside looked like and that there was someone living out there. That, so it was like, oh, well, it's okay now. Yeah, it's so okay. now I can destroy myself yeah, and let no, everyone no out. Yeah, there's no reason to have the city. Right. Let, let them go out and repopulate the earth. I thought that maybe that's what had happened. But knowing more about the book... And, and some of the deleted scenes, no, I don't think that that's what it yeah. was anymore. I mean, possibly, maybe, maybe the guy who directed the movie said, well, that, that's, you know, that's a plausibility that this is just a, a, like, a, like a lifeboat or an ark. Yeah. You know? But I don't think that was the original intent. Maybe not. Although, yeah. like I said, there were they were very subtle, but there were kind of a lot of religious metaphors in there. And like you said, an ark that was a, that's a very good um, kind of a religious story. metaphor. Yeah, that, that would be. They're a good... now out living. They're, they're now re- unleashed and released and kicked out of Eden. Yeah. You know? So you know, it's go forth and interpret. multiply or whatever. Go forth and multiply. Type yeah. Of deal. Which maybe is maybe is what it implied. There. I think that's what they turned the story into. But yeah. I don't think that's originally you know. Based on the book, that's not wasn't the original intent. Yeah, but like I said, the movie made a lot of changes. Made a lot book. of changes, right? So you know, maybe the original intent of the book wasn't the same as the movie. I don't know. They're two. They're kind of two different. Because if it's just an arc, they don't have to grow old. They don't have to learn anything, and they don't have to do all this. It's better if you just keep them dumb, and you're keeping kind of like the human race in suspended animation, a stasis. Yeah, in stasis. You don't want them to get too old because then they start figuring out too yeah. much, and they might destroy the city. Right. You know, which could end. So as up, long as you keep them young and dumb, and you know, keep them right. on drugs, and yeah, and then you just, and just keep recycling, keep them recycling them until the environment's good, and then you let and them then go. you let them out, and right. then they're all still young enough to reproduce Reprodu- and have babies and stuff like that. Right. So you know, you figure, well, they'll figure it out. When that's they what I thought. It, that's what I thought. It was about. <laughs> they'll figure which it out when they get out. Yeah, they'll figure it out. <laughs> Which, you know, maybe they will. We'll see. But, uh, well, shit, we went on almost an hour about Logan's Run. Damn, this is a long one. I know. Sorry. It's a good one, though. If you, if you get a chance, go go check out Logan's Run. It's, yeah, the, and there's, like, a lot of, um, I mean, I think the movie has kind of spurred a lot of discussion. Like, you know what I mean? It has so, a cult following. It really does. You can watch it on YouTube. I think it's uh, about two ninety nine. Yeah, you can watch it on the pay, pay YouTube. That's how we yeah. saw it. This thing has been, Logan's Run, a remake or a sequel, has been in development hell for 20 years. Yeah. Logan's Run may reappear, but I doubt it. Yeah, I mean, if it's been, like, in suspended animation for that long, I don't know. But, you know, it might, it might. It it actually might be good if it was updated, but I don't know. I don't have much faith that they won't mess it up. Yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll fuck it up. And the thing about Logan's Run that's cool, yes, it looks very dated. I mean, it looks very 70s, but that's kind of part of its charm, I think. Yeah. Because it very it has like a really distinctive look to it, like yeah. to you know the way the modern mall it is. It looks very sta- the... sterile. Yeah, it looks, ster- it looks like a sterile mall. And I liked all the colors. Like it's very brightly colored. Yeah. It's it's not like one of those dystopian movies where everything's brown and gray and shit. No. It's very very colorful. No, it looks like a playground. Yeah, on the inside. Yeah, so I liked that about it because it's kind. It was kind of unusual in that genre. That kind of it kind of fits in with my concept of that the, the city is just an arc. Yeah. To keep them happy and reproducing and you can just recycle them you're eliminating all conflicts so that way the the, the city is not or the arc is not destroyed yeah. by internal conflict right so you're just kind of held in stasis yeah okay so that was our discussion about logan's run we went on kind of longer than yeah about this one that we did about other ones oh well that's okay once we start talking but uh okay hope you guys are enjoying these movie reviews uh we will have more to come we have a huge long list so you know if you have any uh recommendations then let us know we will try to get to it eventually but like i said we have probably a couple hundred movies i think yeah, on there. We, gotta, we gotta prioritize them to see what's you know what it'd be what would be a good one to to do next yeah some of these really good ones we gotta save until we really get doing retrospectives down to a science. Yeah, true. Because I, I, I have a feeling we'll get better and better at this as we go. Yeah, we probably will. Okay, so uh, I guess we'll wrap this up. Please remember to go support us on Patreon. I'll put a link in the description. And it, was there anything else you would like to say about Logan's Run? Uh, slow-moving orgies. <laughs> <laughs> Overwhelming, am I yeah. not? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fish! Plankton from the sea! <laughs> sea greens! <laughs> 
I love that guy so much. Even though I still have no idea what the fuck that whole sequence of the movie is supposed to represent. <laughs> like, it's just, even when I was seeing it when I was a kid, I was like, that was fucking random. What the hell? It may be that? an analogy between, with the Garden of Eden. The Garden of Eden was being guarded by a flaming sword. An angel with oh, a flaming sword. Oh, maybe so. There you so, go. Instead of a flaming sword, it's a frozen sword. A yeah, frozen, it's like a guardian. It's frozen guardian. Right. Like, okay, that makes right. sense. Thank you. He just explained that for me. Yeah. Okay, so see you guys later. Bye.